this year. Over 7,000 home cooks from around the nation. Ford for just 20 places in the Master Chef kitchen. You're through to the next round. And between them, this is going to change your life. Created a TV phenomenon. I love it. It's fantastic. Good. No, actually, great. Well done. Forging friendships. Cheers. Cheers. As they battle to become chefs. I'm so not ready to go home. Yeah. Unleash the fury. And in a thrilling finale. This is the bit I'm nervous about. Julie made television history. You are Australia's first master chef. Now, 18 celebrities, from elite athletes to rock stars, entertainers, comedians, journalists, authors, and a state premier. I wouldn't have come here if I didn't think that I had a chance. Feel the heat of competition as they put their passion for cooking and their reputations on the line. This is harder than any workout. At stake, the celebrity Master Chef title. I feel like I'm competing the whole state. And $50,000 to the charity they love. My mum's been through breast cancer, so for me it's a special foundation. If the food's not amazing, it's all guns blazing. Mashed potato disaster. But when these home cooks get it right... That is delicious. I can't actually think of a way you can make it better. You feel the relief, the pride. Please can I come round to your house and have that for dinner? Anytime. And the taste of victory. I'm more than a musician. I'm a musician who can cook. <laughs> Pengilly. I'm really starting to have doubts that I'm going to make it in time. Newsreader Indira Naidu. It looks like you need Matt. I do. You need Matt? Yep, I need Matt. And Josh Thomas. How do I fix that? How do I fix that? Only one can win. I'm Kirk Pengilly from In Excess. I'm a rock star. In the late 80s, uh, early 90s, we were the biggest band in the world. When I'm on the road, it's really hard for me to cook, so I go to a lot of restaurants. The one thing I love doing when I come home is cook. My cooking style's a little mongrel. Not really any particular style, but always it's got a bit of an Asian kind of feel about it, you know, that spice kind of thing. Kirk Pengeli, welcome to the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you. You've rock and rolled your way around the world and you're standing here. How does it feel to be here? <laughs> it's nerve wracking. <laughs> How can it be nerve wracking? I've been out of my comfort zone. I'm used to working with, you know, a team of people, a band. So, you know, here I'm all on my own. Kirk, you must have some stories from being on tour. Tell us part of your food journey. I did a, a Chinese cooking course when I was about 17 or 18. Many, many years ago when the band first started, we moved to Perth for about a year and Michael Hutchins, our singer, he and I shared my uh, panel van across Australia, across the Nullarbor, and uh, when we left from Adelaide, I chopped up a bunch of vegetables and put them in Tupperware containers and whatever, and cooked up a big stir fry in uh, on an open fire in the middle of the Nullarbor. And what did it taste like? It was good, yeah, yeah, it was interesting. So Kirk, let's see who you're cooking against today. I'm Josh Thomas, uh, I'm a stand-up comedian and I'm the Gen Y host on Talking About Your Generation. Say what to Gen Y's Josh Thomas? I love eating! My style of cooking is I just get in the kitchen and then I fiddle about and then hope something happens. Why do I love cooking? Because it's fun and you get to just create something out of nothing and then you get to eat it. It's the best hobby you can have. Better than cross-stitch. 
I'm super excited uh, to, to get into the big warehouse uh, kitchen you have. Mostly, I just want to see Matt Preston eat live. You're right. Look at the body language. Look, he's got his arms crossed. Here. What's going on? All this week, I've just been like, oh, what if they ask me to do a souffle? I don't know how to do a souffle. Why am I learning how to do a souffle? That's all I think at night. I haven't slept all night last night. I'm super scared. Like, sometimes I put on dinner parties, and that's like a terrifying day where I'm like, oh, no, what if I burn the lamb? And then my friends, because there's nothing worse than being at a dinner party yeah, when everyone's yeah. having to eat food that's, that's crap. This is like that, but in front of two million people, George, it's terrifying. Josh. If you think you're nervous now, yes. wait till you see who's going to come through the door next. Oh, oh gosh. I'm India and I do. I'm a journalist, a television presenter, and I write a food blog called Saucy Onion. And I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a more obsessive foodie than me. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good cook. My background is South African, Indian, Australian. My earliest memory is probably the smell of, of my mum's cooking in the kitchen, just smelling those beautiful aromas, the cardamom, the cinnamon, um, the turmeric, the chilli, the spices. I don't think I have a memory that doesn't have food, really. Dear and I do, journalist, welcome to the MasterChef Kitchen. It's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm really, really excited. Now, you've cooked for some pretty impressive people in your time. Who's been the... must be the pinnacle? Probably the one that springs to mind is I um, had to cook a home-cooked meal for the East Timorese president, Jose Ramesh Horta. He was visiting after a, a meeting with the UN and he rang up and he said, look, I need to meet you and update you on the political crisis. And I thought, OK, that in itself is pretty exciting. And he said, look, I've been living out of hotels for the last couple of months. I would die for a home-cooked meal. I was so nervous cooking for a president. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. What, what sort of food are we expecting to see from you here? I'm very passionate about the Italian love of food, the way they love sharing food, so I, I, and I hopefully that comes through in my food. Kirk, Josh, Indira, now let's think about what you're competing for here. You're competing for this prestigious title of Australia's first celebrity master chef. I'd love to win, and be a great honour to be, uh, you know, the first celebrity master chef. One of you will go through to the semi-finals. To decide who that is, you'll cook off against each other in two rounds. The first round, you'll present to us your signature dish. The dish that tells us who you are in the kitchen and how you love to nurture and feed people at the table. I'm very confident my dish will win. I think that it's got all the elements uh, that they're looking for. Round two is the pressure test. In that pressure test, all three of you cook exactly the same dish. Win the signature dish challenge today and you'll get a serious advantage. That advantage is to pick the dish that all three of you will cook. We're looking forward to some great cooking. The famous MasterChef pantry has every ingredient you could ever hope for. We want to see what you can do, your best. Our standards will not drop one iota. If it's rubbish, you're going home. If it's great, well done. Celebrity cooks, <laughs> you'll have 90 minutes to prepare your signature dish for us. Use that time wisely. We wish you the best of luck, and your time starts now. I heard time starts now, it was like, <gasps> you know, off we go. My brain went a bit fuzzy for a minute there and I really had to sort of kind of focus in and work out my sequence of events of what I needed to put on first. Kirk! Ow. Ah, uh, it's the food police. Ah, oh, here we are. You knew we were coming. <laughs> yeah, it was inevitable. <laughs> so tell us the dish you're cooking. I am doing a blackened tuna uh, sitting on top of the wasabi lime celeriac mash. And on the side, there'll be some lotus root chips. Yep. And some broad beans. Beautiful. So what are you worried about this dish? I, I think the main worry is that I overcook the tuna. Yeah. You know, okay. Because I know you guys will hate that, so. All right, well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for you, Kirk. Thanks, mate. Off Good you luck, go. Kirk. All the support you can give me. Yeah. Good. <laughs> he 
Indira, <laughs> it's all happening here. What are you cooking? I'm doing Italian meatballs yes. with a tomato sauce, polenta batons and a pesto oil. What worries you about this dish? I'm really worried about the polenta because you've got both gone on about how you hate stodgy polenta. So I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth and, you know, creamy on the palate. Instead of lumpy and hard. Which is the way it's looking at the moment. It doesn't... No, it's not. I don't know what you're panicking <laughs> about. It looks fine to me. Okay. And you, you know what? Well, do you think it's done? I reckon it tastes great. Josh, tell me what the dishes are that you're cooking. Uh, I'm making a uh, lamb tagine, right. which is like a spicy, fruity curry. Yep. And I'm making a saffron crema catalana, yep. which is orange, cinnamon and saffron. Uh, creme brulee would probably be the best way to describe okay. it. What's all this mess? It's uh, ingredients to cook with. Right, OK. They were all going on about my massy station. Oh, oh, are know. any of the ingredients going in the food or are they just going to remain on the bench? Uh, they're going to remain on the bench for a while. I'm always very messy. I know it's not a good thing, but it's the dishes that we're, we're after, you know? You have one hour to go. I must admit, it smells good in here. I can smell celeriac. I can smell saffron and custard, and I can smell Parmesan cheese and polenta. It smells beautiful. You might have cooked this a thousand times, but today is the day when it counts. I've got my tagine in the pressure cooker, which is hopefully cooking under pressure. And now I've got to start working on my custard. And I whisk the cream into the eggs, so you whisk a little bit in to start so it doesn't curdle, and then you whisk it all in and put it back on the heat for about 15 minutes. I'm preparing my meatball mix. My secret ingredient is ricotta cheese, which makes it light and, and fluffy. This is the bit I like, just getting my hands into it. It's like making mud cakes. You've got 45 minutes to go. It seems like a long time, but you know the clock is ticking. So potatoes are in the oven, and I start peeling the lotus fruit. It's an interesting vegetable because it's kind of hollow all through it, and it's the base of a lotus flower. I throw it into a bag with some corn flour and some salt, shake it all up so that uh, it gets coated in the corn flour, and fry it in the pan. George, I'm used to seeing Indira looking controlled in front of the telly and telling me what's going on in the world. <laughs> there's a few cracks appearing. There's sweat on the brow, there's sweat on the neck. Is she under pressure? Meatballs and polenta. I love it, yeah, you love it. It's delicious. Favorites. But those meatballs, you can either cook them really quickly, a bit yep. like a steak, yep. or they need to be braced for hours. Yes. Otherwise, the risk is they're going to be little rubbery balls you can play table tennis with. I must say, though, that the polenta looks nice. It's Tasty. really smooth. And I'm looking forward to see whether she can pull that together she can fry it because she's cutting it in little batters, and I love it done like that. So Delicious. let's see how she goes. So Kirk, he's done a simple dish. He's got his blackened spices, the tuna. How do you think he's going in the kitchen? Tuna, as soon as you overcook it, disgusting. And he's doing blackened tuna, so he wants lots yeah. of colour. If that fry pan's not hot enough, yeah. and that tuna's not at the right temperature before it goes into the pan, yeah. let alone when it comes out, disaster. <laughs> Gary, I'm really looking forward to tasting Josh's food. He's the most nervous, yeah. you know, he's the funny guy. Yeah. But I reckon he's actually got a bit of skill behind him. Two really great sounding dishes, but I'll be very let down if they're not tasting fantastic. Yeah. I was sort of feeling pretty relaxed. I was kind of getting in the zone and I was on top of all the things I needed to do. With, so, yeah, I was feeling pretty confident. This is the custard. That's my custard. With the saffron in. Big hit yeah. of saffron. Mm. So, I like I, I, I... so 20 minutes ago, I realised it's time to take my lid off the pressure cooker, which I would have preferred to do in the corner, in, in quiet. But it turns out that the judges are, are there at that point. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. Now, that looks all right, doesn't it? Looks it? all right. Smells good. It smells it smell, really smell good. nice. I'm going through the moment of truth now with my polenta because um, I'm trying to deep fry it, and if it hasn't set properly and if it's not cold enough, it will break apart inside the hot oil. So this is not going to work. The 
the outside of the polenta crisps are sticking to the spoon, and I'm realising this is going nowhere really fast. What's happened? I've tried to deep fry my polenta. Yeah. And it's not working? Well, I don't have the right utensil. I what to... utensil do you need? Well, I usually normally use one of those deep fryer things. You okay. Know. So I put it on this and put it in there, but that, that sort of stuff. You know what? I would maybe try shallow frying them. Shallow it? Yeah. Okay. It just gives you a bit more control. You need to get some control into it. Yep. You have 15 minutes to go. And this, if things aren't going quite right, is where the real cooks shine. Win this challenge and it will give you an advantage going into round two. To make the caramel spider webs, you just put sugar in the saucepan and then you just heat it and it goes into a liquid. A friend told me how to do the sugar stuff and I, I thought it was a good party trick to pull out. The thing I was most scared about is getting the tuna cooked properly. Not too much, not too little. And I sear it quickly in a bit of butter and then sprinkle the spice mix that I've made over the top of it. You've got five minutes to go, so this is it. All that hard work, all that practice, your signature dish is just about to go onto the plate. Make sure your timing's right. Give us some beautiful food. I'm getting hungry. We're very excited, guys, to taste your food. Taste check, taste check, and bring it home. I got my creme de out of the fridge. I realized it was a bit runny, and I, I put my uh, caramel on top and then uh, started plating up my curry. In this last five minutes, I've got to basically blacken the tuna, and we'll see what happens here. Yeah, that's not really hot enough. That's just not hot enough. It's two minutes to go and I'm plating up and I feel quite comfortable and I step back from my workbench and I realise that Kirk is having some trouble with his dish. And he does seem very panicked and he's hopping from side to side. You all right? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> What's the no? Uh, the no is that this didn't really get hot enough. Yeah. Hopefully it's kind of doing its business underneath. Yeah. But what I don't want it to be is too rare. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what it's going to draw through? It's really thin. You've got just on a minute. It's not far. Yep. You know what I would do? I'll get everything else on the plate. Come on, guys. You've got 60 seconds to go. You've got 10 seconds to go. I'm still panicking because it's still a bit raw on the outside. Hey! Anyway, I picked one of the pieces and put it on top of the celeriac. Five. I poured the drizzle over the broad, broad bands. Two, one. Step away from your benches. Well done. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Well done. <laughs> the timing ended up being perfect, but I still wasn't sure if the tuna was cooked properly. So now is tasting time. We're going to taste each one of your dishes individually. And of course, Matt, George and I will pass just a little bit of judgment. Remember, the winner gets the chance to pick the dish that all of you have to cook in the next round, which is the pressure test. First, Kurt Pengeli from In Excess. Please bring forward your dish for tasting. And there's kind of a bit of an awkward silence. It's almost like going to the headmaster's office or something. <laughs> My main concern through, you know, the whole hour and a half is that I was going to overcook it. Yeah. And when it came to the crunch, I was actually worried that I'd undercook it. Undercooking it. <laughs> Should we have a look at the tuna first? Happy with that? Yeah, it's... Mm. I think the tuna's cooked perfectly. It's really, really nice. It's pink in the centre. It's not rare, it's not wobbly. It's drawn through nicely, and that keeps it nice and moist. So there's a nice meatiness about it, which is great. Black and spice has got a kick to it. The lotus root chips, I love those. Give me a big pile of those in a basket and a beer. I'm a happy man. They're, they're fantastic.
these are, I'm with Gary, they are awesome. They're a winner, aren't they? <laughs> they are really beautiful. I think the issue with the dish is it's a bit clumsy. It doesn't necessarily work as a whole. To a degree, some of that's about the plating and some of that's about how you play with the flavours because the elements there all work really well. They're just not quite speaking to each other. Thank you. The next dish we'd like to taste belongs to Indira. I find cooking under pressure really difficult. It comes nowhere near as difficult interviewing, you know, a politician. I'd rather do that any day of the week than have to redo what I had to do today. Wow, there's so much flavour in there. You've packed a lot of flavour in there. I like the ricotta thing. I might use that. You don't mind? Yeah, go for it. As a dish, oh, bags and bags of oomph, which is really good to see. The meatballs are a little bit spongy. But in terms of the flavours, first rate. Well done, Indira. OK, thank you very much. The last dish we'd like to try is Josh's. Imagine if I dropped it, huh? I just thought, please compliment me. Please. I mean, the last thing you need in life is honest feedback. That's the problem with this situation, right, is they have to give you honest feedback. Otherwise, it'd be a boring show. So under this comedy exterior, is there a real competitor that wants to win this one? Well, usually, I wouldn't care, but today, I, I feel very competitive. I don't know why. It's cooked well. It's a nice braise. It's got some sweetness about it, which I presume comes from the dates. I like the flavours. I like it a lot. I like the taste of the creamy soup, but it's not the creme catalan. Yeah. That's not a bad job, man. That, yeah. that braise is quite tasty. I know. <laughs> the issue with this dish here is it hasn't set. Yeah. So as a creme catalan, it's a, it's a failure. As a saffron custard, yeah. it's a success, you know? It's got good saffron flavour. The, the, the balance and the texture of the custard is impressive. Two dishes that are a step away from being really fine restaurant quality cooking. Thank you. Well, we've tasted all your signature dishes. Kirk, your tuna dish was really well cooked. Any more, and it would have been dry. It was nicely spiced. It wasn't too much the lotus root chips. We're a winner. Josh, glad that pressure cooker worked. The tagine was soft, the meat was soft. Good flavours, good effort. Shame about the custard. <laughs> Indira, the meatballs, great. I'd happily scoff down a massive bowl of those. Please can I come round to your house and have that for dinner? Anytime. <laughs> All three of you have done a fantastic job, but we have to reveal which one of you has won the signature dish challenge. The winner? Kirk. No way. Good job, Kirk. <laughs> well done, well done. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> Unbelievable. They announced the winner of the challenge, and it was me, <laughs> which I was just blown away. I really just didn't think that's where it was going to go. Kirk, what we love to see in the MasterChef kitchen is a combination of things. Great technique, good execution, smart ideas, people working cleanly. You managed to do all of that. So well done, Kirk. Thank you you will win the advantage of choosing which of two dishes all three of you have to cook in the pressure test. This is a huge <laughs> advantage. Use it wisely, play to your strengths, and maybe play to the weakness of the others. Yeah, I'm really happy about my advantage. It's kind of inspired me to want to win the, you know, this whole heat and go through to the semi-finals. So I'm feeling a bit more confident.
Now, this is how the pressure test works. You all are cooking the same dish. You get the recipe and you get the same time frame in which to cook that dish. We will then taste and decide who has cooked the best dish today. If you win the pressure test, you go through to the semi-finals. So it's only fitting to give you a dish to cook in this pressure test of a certain level of complexity. To deliver that dish, I'd like to welcome to the MasterChef kitchen a man famous for his restaurant in Sydney, Aria, Mr Matt Moran. <laughs> I'm Matt Moran, chef and owner of Aria Restaurant. The industry and food means everything to me. Win or lose, I want them to walk away being inspired. Matt, welcome to Celebrity MasterChef. Thank you, George. Now, we believe you know one of these celebrities. Yes, uh, Kirk and I go way back. We've known each other oh, probably over 15 years. Matt's a bit sneaky because he, you know, never mentioned to me he was going to be on the show. He's cooked for me and I've cooked for him. And I have to say, he's, he's a pretty good cook. But we are in a competition and I'm really sorry, buddy. You're on your own. You're off the Christmas card list. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're friends with a great chef doesn't mean that you're going to be able to create any of their recipes. Matt, you've brought along two dishes. Kirk, you're going to pick one of those dishes that all of you have to cook in the pressure test. Matt, tell us what the first dish is. Guys, the first dish is a vanilla and fig bomb Alaska. You got a little bit of yogurt, you got a little bit of fig jam on the bottom, some fresh fig and orange, a sorbet, with a little twill mixture with some uh, nuts that we actually toast. Kirk, how do you feel about this dish? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I just was hoping that it wasn't going to be a dessert because that's kind of my weakness. I never cook dessert. Matt, can you reveal the second dish that Kirk can pick from? Rabbit galantine, which we have thin strips of rabbit loin around the outside with a confit of rabbit in the centre. We also have a, a liver parfait on the side. Pomegranate, some gingerbread puree. Probably looks a little bit simpler than that, but I can guarantee it's much, much harder. So, Kirk, decision time. Which dish are you going to take? The savoury or the dessert? He hates dessert, he doesn't eat dessert. Why would he pick a dessert dish? I think he knows that I like dessert. I, I think there's no chance that he's going to pick the one that I want. I think I'm going to go... ..the bomb Alaska. And I'll probably bomb Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> the bomb Alaska looked less complicated to me. And I thought, well, if dessert is kind of the thing I'm kind of freaked out about, I should, you know, put myself to the challenge. Matt, no one knows this dish better than you. Where can it all go terribly wrong? The fig reduction on the bottom. If they cook it too long, it'll taste burnt. The ice cream itself, you know, has to be the right temperature. Um, the figs in it, the nice layering in it. The Italian meringue, you whip your egg white too much, you whip it too less, it won't caramelise on the outside. There's lots of elements, Matt. Oh, yeah. How many years' experience has your chef's got to produce something like that? Probably 20 years. I've been alive for just over 20 years, <laughs> so I should be fine. Right, Kirk, would you like to come over and try? What do you think? Confident? Well, it's probably not going to look like that, but um, I'm quietly confident, yeah. I think I've chosen the right dish. I know how to make meringue. I've done that. I've got an ice cream maker. I've made ice cream and sorbet. What could go wrong? I'm the only one out of the three of us that eats desserts. Both Indira and Kirk hate sweet things. So making something that you like and that you understand and that you eat a lot, that's got to help me, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Because this dish is so complex, you get a lifeline. And that lifeline is 90 seconds with Matt Moran. You can choose to use that 90 seconds at any point through the challenge, but you can only use it once. So use it wisely. I know that at various stages during this dessert, I am going to strike trouble. And having Matt there for 90 seconds will be the difference between getting this dish delivered and not getting it delivered. You will find that recipe on your bench, all of the ingredients that you need to make this dessert and you have an hour and 40 minutes to put up that beautiful 
on Alaska. The person that brings us the best dish will go straight forward to the semi-finals of Celebrity Master Chef. Your time starts now. The dish is very complicated, and the first step is to prepare the fig jam, which will go into the parfait. Kirk. Yes, sir. Earlier today, yep. you panicked a bit. Yeah. You've got seven processes in this dessert that Matt Moran's created. I didn't bother counting, but OK, seven. <laughs> we counted for you. How are you feeling about your timing now? Oh, I have no idea at this stage. I think i just got to go and hope that I actually get to the end with everything ready to go. Indira. Hi, boys. What's the biggest concern out of all this? For me, it's, it's following a recipe, because I tend to not be hugely into accuracy, even though I am in my news. But uh, when it comes to measuring, so. yes. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes it's to sort measuring, of, I sort of go, yeah. oh, look, that's OK. So I've got to use my scales, make sure I really judge everything accurately, because I know that's going to be wholly important. OK. I don't have much parfait in my life, but I know that it is a little bit lighter than ice cream. It's, it's always served like in a shape for some reason. I don't know why that is. Maybe it doesn't scoop very well. Josh. Yes, hello, how's it going? I'm great. What's going on? Uh, at the moment, I'm just trying to figure out this. It says just, thick and just, tail. Yeah, but just be careful, because what will happen here, see, is it, because it, it's really hot on the outside, it'll scramble if you're not careful. You might just want to give that a quick mix. Just, just to knock a little bit of heat out. Whoa. Yeah. Guys, you've got an hour and 20 minutes to go to produce the bomb of a bomb Alaska. And don't forget, you've got that 90-second lifeline that you can use at any time. You just have to summon Matt Moran, and he will be there. As soon as I get my ice cream on, I've got to get my sorbet on. And that's really simple. You, you put orange and gelatin and, and sugar in a pot, and then you cool it down and put it in an ice cream maker. Yeah. Josh is steaming ahead here, I think. You know, He's got his jam in the blast chiller. He's got his sorbet in the blast chiller. He's got his ice cream in. Yeah. He's now onto his twill mix. He's doing pretty damn good, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's on it. Should we um, penalise him half an hour? Just for being young. Yeah, and, <laughs> and for being funny, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Gen Y, you know, that's it. <laughs> How do you think Indira's going? Well, she's very organised. She's got the fig jam done. She's got ice cream and sorbet both in the churn. In the chillers, yeah. And uh, she's just measuring out the, the twill mix now by the look of it. Yeah. It's Kirk I'm a little bit nervous about at the moment. So I take the parfait mix off the boil and throw in the cream and the Baileys. But instead of throwing the measured amount of Baileys in, I threw the rest of the Baileys that was in the jar in. So I don't even know how much Baileys went into it. What am I doing? Then it gets worse. I have never used an ice cream maker, and so that's the next stage. And, of course, I put one of the pieces in upside down and couldn't get the lid on. I'm just thinking I'm way in over my head. That doesn't look so good. So I figure I've, I've got to call Matt and I've got to use my lifeline. Matt! Buddy, 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 what have you, you done? Oh, what have you done? Everything wrong. No, yeah, I mean, what have well, you done? I don't know when this is ready, but I've already put the fig in. So now you're going to have fig ice cream? Yeah. That's all right, Pretty instead nice. of vanilla. Yeah. Vanilla and fig. What I'm worried about is that the fig in it with all that sugar, might be a little bit too sweet and it may not set, so you've got to give that a really good blast chill. It's going to be a good Hey, don't let it go to pieces, please. You have 45 minutes to go now. It isn't very long, to be honest, and I'm starting to panic a wee bit because I'm not sure you're going to get this dessert up all in time. Indira, it looks like you need Matt. I do. You need Matt? Yep, I need Indira Matt. Indira needs Matt. <laughs> It's now more than half an hour and I'm still waiting for the parfait to thicken properly in the ice cream machine. Indira, what's Mash, happening? I've, I've thickened my ice cream yes. and then I put in my fig puree. Is that a good enough consistency to put into my moulds? It still uh, feels, looks a bit runny to it me. It does look a little bit runny. I think you're going to have to get them churned, so try and scrape off the, the sides of it yep. as thick as you possibly can. Get them in there and make sure they're down so they don't leak. Yep. And that's okay. pushed right down and get them straight in the freezer. Okay. And what else? I know, that was the only question I had. I know, I've wasted my time with you, haven't no, I? I know, I know, I know. Look, remember, the presentation is a key thing, yeah? OK, thanks, Good luck. Matt. At 30 minutes to go, I'm 
working on a bunch of different things at the same time. So what do you got left to do? That's about to go into the freezer. Looks yep. fantastic. You've made your sorbet still needs to be churned. Yep. Your fruits, are they cut? No. Um, your biscuit, is that made? No. And the nuts are done either. Yeah, and the sugar nuts. So the sugar nuts. I so think probably with 30 minutes to go just on, you've probably got to focus on the, the principal yeah. part of the dish, you know, because I'm not sure that you're going to be able to finish it. So you might want to think about what you can put up that's going to impress us. I'm kind of freaking out. I'm way behind the other guys, and I'm really starting to have doubts that I'm going to make it in time. My chill biscuit is still cooking very nicely in the oven. The parfait's in the freezer, the sorbet's coming along nicely, and I'm comfortable now to move on to the Italian meringue, which is the final part of the bomb Alaska. Guys, this is the final 15 minutes of which one of you will be going through to the semi-final. Matt! <laughs> Matt, I need you! Well, I decided to use my lifeline on the meringue just as I'm about to put it on the heat, because that's the bit that I'm most unfamiliar with. Josh, how are you going? Matt, good. Uh, I beat this until, would you call that, peaks? Yeah, have you added, you've added your sugar to it already? Sugar and egg, yeah. You've, heat, you've heated your sugar? I've not heated yep. my sugar. Right. It needs to be a bit more peaky than that. A bit more peaky? Yeah. So you can actually start to fold it. It'll start to get thick, yeah. and it'll start to sort of get a bit syrupier, and then you can easily just put it around the bomb. Take the bomb out, Yeah. and you're all right with the presentation of it? Uh, well, I was going to use you for that or this, and I'm using you for this. All right, fair enough. You've got 10 minutes to go. Let's move it. This is where it counts. Matt Moran warned us that the most difficult part of this dish was going to be getting the right consistency for the Italian meringue. I start trying to put my meringue on and realise that it is running all over my parfait. I put my parfait on the plate, I get my meringue ready to go, I pour it on, and then it all just fell into this puddle at the bottom of the plate. How do I fix that? How do I fix that? So, in an act of incredible desperation, I pick my parfait up and put it in the meringue and roll it around. I put it back on the plate, it all fell off. I decided to throw that out of the side again. I'd never done this before, maybe I just needed some practice. I need another two hands. Probably left making the meringue a little late, but I'm just waiting for it to get its peaks, but it's getting thick, it's getting there. Guys, you got five minutes to go. This is crucial time. This is when you're plating your dish up. Remember, we eat with our eyes. Make it beautiful. Come on. I get the parfait out, put it on the plate, and I start spreading some of the meringue on it, and it's just collapsing and melting. It's ridiculous. It's just not going to happen. So I throw it away. At this stage, the only element that I can't get right is my meringue around my parfait. And Gary tells us that we won't finish every element of this dish. So we have to decide which parts of that dish we will finish. I think, fine, I'll just put a tiny bit of meringue on top as like a tribute, as like a tip of my hat to what it's supposed to be, and plate up everything else. My heart's really pounding, I'm panicking, and I figure I can't give up. I've just got to go and get another one out of the freezer and have another go at it. You have 60 seconds to go, so I hope it's on the plate. Come on, guys, you've got to serve up the best thing possible. Put it on the plate, make it look great, and we're going to love it. Stay up, stay up. You have 10 seconds. There's adrenaline, panic, everything going through my mind, but I'd actually got pretty much everything on the plate. Two, one. That's it, guys. Step away from the benches. Well, well done, done, guys. Good job. Amazing. I was first up to take my dish up to the judges, and I can tell you there is no lonelier walk than that walk. So, Indira, how did you go? I really enjoyed myself. I enjoyed all the elements, putting them together, particularly because a lot of those things I'd never attempted before. Shall we taste? Yeah, let's do it. 
That looks nice, doesn't it? The ice creams, I love the sort of chunks of fig in there. It's really yummy. But what I really want to comment on is how delightful that segment looks. You know, segmenting is something you learn as an apprentice. It's a job you do all day. You sit there and segment oranges. And that's just, it's really top job. The ice cream packs some punch. That fig jam in that ice cream is just absolutely fantastic. And in terms of the presentation, it looks really pretty. Obviously, what went wrong is the meringue. That consistency of that meringue is completely wrong. It's not a bomb Alaska. I think you did very, very well. Thank you. So it's my turn. I'm walking into the restaurant. Three guys are sitting there. George glares at me. He doesn't blink. That man just never blinks. Uh, he's just he's just staring me down. Josh, yes. how did you go with your bombalaska? I think it went all right. The meringue, obviously a disaster. I just put a little bit on top as like a tribute to what it should be. Josh, what impressed me most is your knowledge in the kitchen. I think you, you're very switched on, you know what's going on. The only thing, of course, is it's not a bomb Alaska. It's, yes. a, it's a fig parfait on a plate with a beautiful summer salad. That's what it is. And you've done a very good job of that. The problem, as an execution of the dish, sadly, yeah. it's not there. But, man, you can cook. Thank Thanks, you. Josh. I'm nervous. With the signature dish, we all stood in front of the judges and we are all in the same room together. So it felt a little easier, but this time we're on our own. Gentlemen. So Kirk, how do you think you went? For someone who's never made dessert really ever, I'm kind of somewhat proud of what I've created there. Excited. It's the first bomb Alaska that we've had. The parfait itself's got a lovely flavour. It's nice and smooth. It's not as jammy as the others. There was more fig in, in the other two parfaits, but it still tastes really, really nice. I actually love the sorbet. I think it's really refreshing. It's not as sweet as the others. So that was a, a really a highlight for me. Your artistic licence with the, with the bickies underneath, they're not really refined for me. They're not bad, but wow, that sorbet is a winner for me. I love it. I really love it. Thanks, man. Thanks, Kurt. It's a big moment. You look a little nervous, actually, which surprises me still. We've tasted your dishes. One of you will go straight through to the semi-final, and the other two, unfortunately, will be going home. I am here to win. I think every competitor in this competition is in it to win it. Kurt. Superb job. You put up the only bomb Alaska complete. But the presentation was a little lacking here and there, which is a shame. Josh, you did really well in the kitchen. And your dish had some beautiful little touches, but you didn't manage to do the bomb Alaska. A lovely parfait, but missed the mark. It was that meringue. Indira, beautiful little touches, lovely presentation, strong flavours, and your parfait was absolutely fantastic. Really jammy, lots of fig, but you didn't manage to get that meringue on. In the end, it was too soft, too runny, and it was never going to work. A great performance by all three of you, but there's obviously only one berth available in the semi-final. It's a tough decision we have to make. Indira? Love the presentation, love the figness of your parfait. But I'm sorry to say, it's not you going through to the semi final. I don't feel any disappointment that I haven't gone through. What I experienced was just so much fun and so rewarding. And uh, there was quite a sense of accomplishment just getting that very complicated dessert together. Kirk and Josh, only one of you can go through. 
The challenge in making this choice revolves around this. Kirk, excellent bomb Alaska, but lacking in the detail that potentially could take you all the way. Josh, watching you in the kitchen, you have the best potential as a cook. Going through to the next round, with a berth in the semi-finals, is Kirk. <laughs> well, done. <laughs> well done. You deserve that. Wow. I can't believe it. I just don't think I'm worthy. Josh seems to be better around the kitchen, and Indira has a lot more experience. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. We talk a lot about the hero of the dish. The reason why you ordered the Bomb Alaska is for the Bomb Alaska. And because you executed that so well and you only won to pull it off, you came through. Josh, Indira, it's time for you to leave the MasterChef kitchen. Thanks very much, Thank guys. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. See you, Kirk. Don't forget to ride. <laughs> I was disappointed, which really annoyed me, because 20 minutes before that, I was like, whatever, I had a nice day cooking. It's been fun. I've learned some things. And then they said nice things, and now... Now I got my hopes up. Kirk, in the semi-finals, you'll be competing against five others. So the competition's going to be tough, tougher than it was today. Yeah. We wish you luck. We're looking forward to it. And we hope you do well. Thanks, guys. I'll try and make you proud and me proud. Well <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. It's a great Thanks. feeling to have won but it means I'm going through to the semi-finals, which means I'm scared again. I'm not sure yet if I can take out the title of Celebrity MasterChef, but I'd be really happy if I did. This season on Celebrity MasterChef Australia. Top, top! If this was my kitchen, I'd be kicking your butts. I love it. Next time. Show us what you're made of. High fives Kathleen De Leon Jones, author and journalist Peter Fitzsimons, and losers Michelle Bridges. Give me a push up any day of the week. Head to head in the ultimate pressure test. The most difficult dish ever to be put into this MasterChef kitchen. Only one will sizzle into the semi finals. It comes down to the dish that you cook today. 